What's good, so we getting back to another reaction video, and today we're going to be reacting to a video that I was supposed to react to earlier this week, but I kind of lost track of the video, but we're going to react to it now, and it's basically what's been going on in CHOP, and it's going to sum up what's been going on this last, last probably about seven days. So let's get into the video. So we gang, we finna blow out, yeah. So we gang, we finna close out, yeah. So we gang, yeah, we finna blow out. Other news now, three shootings since Saturday in the area protesters have dubbed the Capitol Hill organized protest zone. The police chief and mayor are now trying to regain control of that area that is getting national attention. King 5 Sebastian Robertson joins us live with the very latest. Sebastian. Yeah, ever since police abandoned the East Precinct, protesters have been successful in holding ground. But after three reports of shooting, the question now is how much longer can this really go on for? The city will not allow for gun violence to continue in the evenings around Capitol Hill. This week, the first hint from city officials that the so-called CHOP may be approaching the beginning of the end. We don't want violence. We don't want people coming in that they've got immunity. We don't want no, no sexual assault. We don't want nobody raping, hurting, killing, no gunshot. And I've personally heard that there has been, and these are all black people that have been uh, the victims. I haven't heard of any white folks. I'm sure there's white folks that have been victimized, but it's mostly black people that they're targeting. Uh, three shootings, uh, one murder, one person in the hospital. I think we reacted to that earlier this week. Y'all seen that? And I also heard about a kidnapping. So it's it's going down at nighttime over there, man. It's not safe. Burns has never protested before. But he says he was drawn to Capitol Hill because this movement was different. But what I see in Seattle... What they got here, this is special. The 59-year-old is a volunteer on what's called a community response team. His job is security. People come down there and they push the envelope. I can't tell you how many times I'm going to use my mace. Tuesday, an act of violence that many fear will detract from the movement. Police say a man in his 30s was shot, found on the border of the CHOP. That man expected to survive, but a 19-year-old shot Saturday didn't. A third man, a 33-year-old remains in the hospital in critical condition. It's time for people to go home. Late Monday afternoon, a change in tone from Seattle's mayor, condemning the violence as they say the city is considering the next steps. We don't want none of that. No violence. We need more brown and black bodies down there to help us. The keystone for all of this may be the East Precinct, a building police have abandoned and one that protesters are surrounding but have not entered. Police now publicly saying their officers plan to return. Well, the question lingering now is when and how will police get back into that precinct? We heard yesterday that they are going to take the steps to get back inside. And that is my main question. When and how are they going to do this? Because to keep us out of the precinct, they threw um, tear gas, grenades, they threw flashbangs, uh, they hit people with sticks, um rubber bullets, etc. right? So what are they gonna do to claim this spot back? And as you guys seen in the video yesterday, it went from about maybe a thousand people per day, 2,000, 3,000, maybe even upwards of 6,000 people per day during the like, you know, the, the main times of the protest to about now, I went probably mid afternoon, this may be less than 100 people. So will the police be able to get it back without force? Probably. Will they probably use force? Yeah. So it's probably going to be some, you know what I'm saying? Um, they say how it starts is how it ends. But I just hope everybody ends up being able to leave safely. And hopefully no cops kill no more people in trying to get the precinct back. Because that's what I'm really uh, concerned about is that they're going to kill somebody trying to get up in there. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. Sebastian, thank you. City leaders, meantime, are taking a closer look at the Seattle Police Department's handling of recent mass demonstrations. King 5's Natalie Swaby live tonight with what was discussed during a public safety meeting today. Natalie. Yes, during that meeting, the Office of Police Accountability said they have received thousands of complaints in recent weeks and already have 28 pending investigations related to the protest. 
every one of these cases will ultimately go through um, not just our civilian supervisors, but also for me. I'm the person that issues findings in all these cases. Andrew Meyerberg, the director of the Office of Police Accountability, says after recent demonstrations, his office has received thousands of emails, phone calls, and contacts from the community. All in all, 18,000. Again, the vast majority of those were related to the pepper spraying of the young boy. There have also been complaints about SPD's use of force. Chief Carmen Best said demonstrators violently targeted officers and police did use tear gas. Last week, I asked the chief about that. It can often uh, be a less lethal way of uh, dispersing a crowd. Hell no, that shit stings. That shit make your eyes burn. Have you hard to breathe in? No. Uh, without having to go hands on, without using just our PR 24s and our riot batons. So it has been uh, determined to be less. Um, less dangerous to do that. That said, it's been very clear to us that people are not wanting us to use the CS. A King 5 poll posed this question to 700 Seattle adults. When Seattle police used tear gas against protesters, was this an appropriate display of force or an excessive use of force? The majority said excessive. In a letter to death. And you know why it's excessive, to be honest with you? It's not that, like, okay, I'm sure getting beat with a baton is worse than getting pepper sprayed. But it's like when you get, when that shit gets in your eyes, man, and, man, nah, it's lethal, bro. That shit's lethal. Hey, the chief put the focus on re-envisioning public safety. She writes, across almost nine years of court-guided reform, SPD developed leading policies on crowd management, de-escalation, and use of force. She goes on to say, it's clear those processes and policies are no longer enough to maintain the trust of the community. SPD says it's committed to working with the community and is considering ideas like adding a community member to the department's command staff, assessing non-criminal 911 calls, current outcomes, and alternate responses, and aligning the department's mission to reflect humanization and not criminalization. And those are just a few of the ideas. SPD says input is needed from police officers and community members. That's going to be part of the process as they work to redefine the department's mission and structure. I'm in Seattle. Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. Yeah, man. It's getting wild out there, man. That news uh, report was posted on the, the 23rd. It is now the 27th. So that's about four days old, but I just wanted to inform you guys on what's going on or what's been going on in CHOP because uh, as you've seen from my last video, I will put the link in the eye right here. Um, it's pretty dead and it's, it seems like it's coming to a close. So I'm going to be looking, mm, I'm not going to say I'm not going to, I'm not going to be looking forward to, but I'm curious to see how that end this and how this all ends. Or the war is not finished, but the battle may be coming to a close. Uh, Silver Gang, I'm out of here. So we gang, we finna close out, yeah. So we gang, yeah, we finna blow out, yeah. So we gang, yeah, we finna close out, yeah. Making all